1 Corinthians chapter number 15 verse number 58 therefore my beloved brothers be steadfast immovable always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain the word of the Lord is blessed Amen. For a few moments, on today, I want to dialogue with you from the subject, navigating the path to excellence. Navigating the path to excellence. And for a theme, as Christ chasers, we should be continually doing our best in serving God, fulfilling our spiritual responsibilities, and living out our faith in our actions. My brothers and my sisters, I truly believe that we can all relate to the fact that life is filled with what I call the unexpected. These surprise elements, Brother Todd, they can take various forms. Some challenging and others disheartening. We encounter unexpected burdens that weigh heavy on our hearts. There are unforeseen problems that test what we are made of. An unanticipated persecution of the king that challenges our faith. We understand that family conflicts can arise unexpectedly, as can ethical dilemmas that shake our moral foundation. Have you ever been there? Sometimes we experience seasons of spiritual dryness. My brothers and my sisters, these seasons of spiritual dryness, they catch us off guard, leaving us feeling disconnected from God and leaving us feeling disconnected from one another. Relationships may face unexpected strains and betrayal may come from the ones we least expected from. All right. Sickness and sudden bills can disrupt our lives. And tragedy, my brothers and my sisters, can strike without warning. We experience the unexpected on our jobs. And we can even experience the unexpected in the household of faith. Yes. However, my brothers and my sisters, even though we all experience the unexpected, there's still a requirement. The requirement is from God. And the requirement is that we continue to navigate the path of our process that leads us to our purpose, and we do it in excellence. Yes. yes. Through these trials and tribulations, mm -hmm. we are reminded, Reverend Carter, of the unpredictability 
and the complexity of life. However, it is in faith, it is in facing these unexpected challenges that we have the opportunity Deacon Belchers to deepen our faith, strengthen our character, and grow in our understandings of ourselves and our beliefs. While these difficulties may shake us to the core, Deacon and Smith, they provide fertile ground for spiritual growth and spiritual transformation. As believers in the true and living God, we are called to navigate the unexpected. And we are called, Reverend Slater, to navigate the unexpected with steadfastness. We are to navigate the unexpected with grace. We are to navigate the unexpected with mercy and the growing faith. And we know that through our struggles, we can emerge stronger, more compassionate, and more connected to God. In the face of life's uncertainties, and let me tell you something, if you haven't experienced it yet, tell your neighbor, keep living. Keep living. In the face of life's uncertainties, mm -hmm. let us find peace in knowing, thinking it's glad that we are not alone. Amen, not alone. That our faith can sustain us through even the most difficult times that we've experienced. Yeah. And through it all, even though we deal with the unexpected, we can emerge by faith as beacons of hope, as examples of love and light in a world filled with darkness and uncertainty. However, my brothers and my sisters, understand that we will experience the unexpected. And when we do, we are still called by God to navigate the path of our journey in excellence. Amen. And we do this as we continue to strive to achieve the purpose that God has for us. All right. The songwriter says, earthly friends may prove untrue. Doubt and fears may assail. One still loves and cares for you. One who will never fail. The songwriter goes on to say, Jesus never fails. Amen. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth may pass away, but my brothers and my sisters, we can give God praise up in here, up in here, because Jesus has never failed us yet. There will be difficulties as we strive to navigate the path to our purpose. But no matter what comes our way, Sister Patty, Jesus never fails. And we can count on him. Amen. There may be strategic points in our lives where folk have left us, let us down. Our disappointment may endure for a moment, but Jesus never fails. Yes. And we can count on him. There may be longing yeah. for more when we're overwhelmed by less. Jesus never fails. And we can always count on him. Yes. Understand there will be unforeseen roadblocks in our pathway to victory. We might encounter moments when people fail to support us. We may find ourselves yearning for abundance. 
while feeling burdened by lack. People we trust may disappoint us. And when we need them the most, we may desire progress, but feel restricted by limitations. Yeah. But no matter what you're going through, Jesus never fails. Never fails. Yeah. And we can count on him. See, the songwriter said more about Jesus. Will it I know more of his grace to others show? More of his saving fullness see? More of his love who died for me. If we're going to navigate the path of, to excellence, we must have more of Jesus. Yes. Amen. The Apostle Paul is credited with writing what we know is this second letter All right. to the Corinthians. In this letter to the Corinthians, Paul addresses a wide range of issues affecting the church at Corinth. These issues include division within the church. Do I got some Bible readers here? All right. Sexual immorality. <coughs> Disputes among believers. The misuse of spiritual gifts. And questions about marriage, idolatry, and the resurrection of the dead. Many modern day believers are totally incorrect when they state that the book of Corinthians is a book of doctrine. However, we understand that what Paul is doing is addressing the issues in a carnal church. All right. <laughs> Amen. All right. Furthermore, Paul offers practical advice and theological insight to address these concerns, Mother Wright, inside the household of faith mm -hmm. at Corinth. Mm -hmm. There are three terms we glean application from or today. Due to, the, due to us being thankful for what Jesus has done we are to stand firm. Yeah. We are to let nothing move us from the path that God has placed us on. And we are to always give ourselves fully to the work of the Lord. All right. My brothers and my sisters, when we give ourselves totally over to the work of the Lord, see, we do our best and when we do our best, Mother, right, many times we do more than what is required of us. My God. All right. All right. But we are to be continually aware of our labor, yes. even if our labor leads us to exhaustion. All right. And understand that our labor, that this labor that God has given us is not in vain. Our key words. Reverend Slater, when we, avert, when we observe the NLT version of the Bible, are be strong, be immovable, and always work. See, the load sometimes, Ray, it gets heavy. But be strong, be immovable, and always work. The God assigned labor at times may get overwhelming. Be strong, be immovable, and always work. Discrimination and persecution may come knocking at your door. Y'all know what I'm about to say. Be strong, be immovable, and always work. The goals we set may not always seem attainable, and our dreams may get shattered. Be strong. Yes, sir. Be immovable. And 
always work. Sometimes when you're doing the work, doubt may creep in and our faith may begin to waver. Y'all know what I'm about to say? Be strong. Be unmovable. And always work. See, in our text, Paul reminds his readers again that the resurrection body will not be flesh and blood. We understand through our studies that flesh and blood is well suited for the earth. But it is not at all suited for heaven. Consequently, because flesh and blood are unsuitable for heaven, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Are y'all walking with me through this text? Yes. Paul emphasizes the fact that the human body is perishable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, Doc. And it is not suited for and cannot inherit the imperishable. Mm-hmm. I'm going somewhere, church. Walk with it, Doc. Walk with it. It must undergo transformation yes. mm-hmm. to be fit All right. for inheriting heaven. Uh-huh. Mm. And indeed, yeah. my brothers and my sisters, this transformation will occur. We must grasp the significance of Christ's resurrection which we are going to be celebrating in a couple of weeks. Yes. Christ's resurrection, my brothers and my sisters, it broke and breaks the power of death for those who believe in him. Amen, amen. And death, I want you to see this right here. See the text? Death, we understand is no longer master over us. That's right. Amen. That's right. Because death is no longer master over him. Amen. Amen. But we understand that death remains a formidable adversary yes. for us on today. Yes. Amen. Death my brothers and my sisters, disrupts mm. our dominion over God's creation. All right. And it inflicts unwanted sorrow mm. in us when we experience it. Even though, as believers, we no longer need to fear death, it can it continues to plague us and trouble us while we run this race. Yes. While we run However, Deacon and Simpson, with the return of Christ, the perishable will be clothed with imperishability. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And the mortal will be clothed with immortality. Amen. All right. Fulfilling the prophesied victory over death foretold by Isaiah. Amen. All right. But quoting another prophet, Paul challenges death. Mm-hmm. He says, Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? And, and if we want to continue with the metaphor, Paul implies that death has left its sting in Christ. Amen. <laughs> death left its sting in Christ as a bee leaves its sting in the victim. 
I want us to understand that Christ has bore the whole sting of death. Yes, entirety. In order that we have to bear none of it. Amen. Are y'all with me on today? Amen. I'm talking Amen. heavy, Doc. <laughs> okay. The apostle reminds his readers that the sting of death is sin. Amen. Uh -huh. The harm in death stems from sin. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, death itself is a consequence of sin. Yeah. 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 Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world, That's right. and death through sin, and so death spread to all men. Because all sin yeah. is all short uh -huh. of God's glory. Uh -huh. However, we're going to get to the good part. In verse 57, it states, But thanks be to God Hallelujah. who gives us victory. Yes. Thanks be to God Hallelujah. for the victory through our Lord Jesus the Christ. Yes. 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 Understand, due to Jesus' uh -huh. perfect obedience. Yes. To the law uh -huh. and his atonement uh -huh. for the consequences of sin. Yes. Those who have faith in him are no longer bound by the law and are instead guided by grace. Yes. Amen. We have been set free uh -huh. from the requirements of the law through his sinless life. Jesus met the demands mm -hmm. of the law mm -hmm. and through his death mm -hmm. he triumphed mm -hmm. over sin. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Yeah. All right. yeah. If we really believe and if we are truly thankful that our resurrection is sure uh -huh. and that we will be transformed from the perishable the dishonorable, the weak, the natural, the mortal, and the earthly to the imperishable, glorious, powerful, spiritual, immortal, and heavenly, we should therefore Amen. prove our assurance and our faithfulness in this mortal life by being steadfast. Yeah. Immovable. Immovable. <laughs> and always. And always. Abounding in the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. If we are thankful Hallelujah. for what he has done, we will be steadfast. Yeah. Immovable. Yeah. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. Do I got five folks up in here? You are going to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Yes. Yes. So how can we, uh -huh. mm, mm, mm. as believers, navigate the path All right, towards becoming more like Christ uh -huh. and dwelling with him? All right. Number one. As servants of Jesus Christ, we endure for the gospel's sake. Yeah. Paul lets us know, no matter what we endure, there must be, if we're going to endure Elder Kill, there must be a commitment to being steadfast. Amen. Being steadfast. Check this out, Brother Wood. It means remaining consistent. Being reliable. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And being fully committed to the cause of Christ. Amen. Deacon Woods, this diligently involves remaining strong 
and relentless in our determination. Hallelujah. Stay true to our convictions and standing firm in the face of adversity. Amen. Overall, being steadfast, it reflects a sense of loyalty to God. Yeah. It shows the strength in our character and the dedication that perseveres through trials and tribulations. Continue, we must continue, even in the midst of adversity, to hold on to our beliefs without hesitation. My brothers and my sisters and disciples of Jesus Christ, no matter what we go through, we must be prepared to stand firm and hold on to our beliefs no matter what. Point number one, we endure for the gospel's sake. But not only do we endure for the gospel's sake, as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, is the share. Amen, amen. We focus on pursuing excellence consistently. We, we, not, we don't only focus on excellence when folks from the church are watching. Uh -huh. We don't only focus on excellence on Sunday morning. Uh -huh. But we are to pursue excellence Everything. consistently. Because he's always watching. Ah, thank Amen. You. But pursuing excellence consistently is closely linked with the Apostle Paul encouraging us to remain unmovable. Mm. Being Immove, unmovable implies that our dedication to God's work is solid and unshakable. Okay. Come on now. Say it again. That means our dedication yeah. to God's work yes. is solid, solid. And, unshakable. and unshakable. Yeah. It suggests that we should be standing firm in our beliefs. We should not be easily swayed by doubt. All right. We should not be swayed by distractions or obstacles that may arise in our lives. It involves remaining resolute and persistent in our Christian walk. And we should be continuously pursuing God well, yeah. in the good times yeah. and the bad times, yeah. serving yeah. Him yeah. faithfully. Well. Notice one thing I didn't say anything is ready. I didn't say serving the church. But our service is to God. And if we serve God consistently, it has a trickle down effect to the church. But the church is not our primary objective. God is. Yeah. So we endure for the gospel's sake. We focus on pursuing excellence consistently. But last but not least, as witnesses of Jesus Christ. We are dedicated to serving God wholeheartedly. We are encouraged as believers to be diligent, enthusiastic, well, and persistent in our efforts to honor God through our actions, okay. our work, and our conduct. Amen. Paul 
encourages us as believers to excel or exceed expectations in our commitment to God's work. Don't let nobody tell you that you are doing too much for our God. Don't let folk hold you back from doing the work for our God. Because we are to be committed to the work. And we do this through acts of kindness. Sharing the gospel that we've already studied. Mm. Serving others. Okay, I found this on the web for the gospel. <laughs> Amen, Siri. She's serving. Amen. We all want you. We all want you. Amen. Woo! I'm going to be preaching today. Go ahead. <laughs> but we must exceed expectations yes. in our commitment to the work. We do this by being diligent in our dedication to serve the Lord. Yes. We demonstrate our love for God and our desire to follow His will. This involves Consistently seeking ways to glorify God. All right. Yes. yes. No, I didn't say ways to glorify self. Mm -hmm. But we should be finding ways to glorify God. We should be finding ways day in and day out to grow spiritually. And it should be our mandate, Sister Patty, to make an impact on the lives of our brothers and our sisters. Amen. In essence, always excelling in the work of the Lord is a call to the church to be proactive and enthusiastic when we engage God's purpose. And we should be continually striving to live out our faith in a manner, Leon, that brings glory to him. Amen. So we endure for the gospel's sake. We focus on pursuing excellence consistently. We are to be dedicated to serving God wholeheartedly. The songwriter says, I left my friends and kindred bound for the promised land. Yes. The grace of God upon me. The Bible in my hand. In distant lands I trod Crying sinners, come to God. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. My brothers and my sisters, if we're going to navigate the path to excellence, stand your ground and don't hold back. If we're going to be light in a world full of darkness, and despair. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. And don't hold back. If our desire is to be vessels of peace in these chaotic times, stand your ground. Stand your ground. And don't hold back. Amen. If we're going to be steadfast, if we're going to be immovable. If our desire is to always abound in the work of the Lord, brothers and sisters, stand your ground. Stand your ground. And don't hold back. The songwriter says, when the storms of life are raging, Lord, cover me. Hallelujah. In the midst of trials and tribulations, Lord, Stand by, me. Stand by me. In the midst 
of my faults and in the midst of my failures, Lord, please guide me. In the midst of persecution, Lord, be a fence all around me. The song we had to go through to say, Jesus, be a fence all around me every day. Jesus, I want you to protect me as I travel along the way. I know you can. I know you will. Fight my battles if I just keep still. Lord, be a fence all around me every day. Sometimes we may doubt ourselves, but God is doing a great work in HMBC. Sometimes we may lose our focus, but God is doing a great work in HMBC. Directions may not always seem clear, but tell your neighbor, God is doing a great work in HMBC. Understand we've all experienced loss we may be having difficult times. Situations may be causing us to get fed up. I need you to dust yourself off because God is doing a great work in us. We may be facing adversity. We may be experiencing setbacks. Sometimes we may feel isolated but give God some praise he's doing a great work in us there may be resistance there may be struggles and there may be battles you don't have to worry because God is doing a great work in us how do you know because when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word what a glory he sheds on our way while we do his good will he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey trust and obey because there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey Elder Kiel and Pastor Kiel was here on today he would say trust in the one I trust if the judgment is clouded trust in the one I trust if you feel like you can't go on trust is the one I trust. If you're struggling with a heavy load, trust is the one I trust. If life has you overwhelmed, trust is the one I trust. If you're broken and you need me, trust is the one I trust. If you need a fresh start on today, trust the one I trust. Hallelujah. See, the one that we trust is the great I am. The one that we trust is Mary's baby. He's the lily yeah. of the valley. He's the bright yeah. and born of star. The one we trust, he's the divine one. The one we trust is the mighty God. Trust in the Lord of time. 
God. And without him, I would fail. But what we trust and see the angels, they bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Tell your neighbor, what a mighty God. In the one I trust. Yes. So how can we as believers navigate the path towards becoming more like Christ yes. and dwelling with him? It's simple. And I'm done. Be steadfast. Yes. Be immovable. Yes. Always abounding. In the work Word. of the Lord, yeah. knowing that your work is not in vain. Go to the church room.